Hey guys, I thought it would be really useful if we do some verbal reasoning questions live with you so you understand what my thought process is as well as how to go about answering these questions, giving you some insight and some tips as we go along as well. So just before we begin, I do want to reiterate some important points and the first one is timing. Obviously everyone knows that timing is the crux of VR. It's the most important thing that you need to nail down and I'll talk about tips a little bit later on and also in this video up here. But you need to know, for example, when you're 10 minutes through the exam that you're around 22 minutes through as well. And another thing that's related to timing is you have to be really quick at finding the relevant info in the passage. Obviously there are two different ways that you can do this and I also talk about it in the other video, but most people fall into the trap of reading the whole passage and trying to answer the questions like that and for most people this actually doesn't work because most people aren't like super fast readers that are able to do this in the time allotted so what most people have to do is like the keyword method where you find good keywords and stuff and then you go back to the passage and I'll kind of show you how I do that today as well another thing that holds people back is when they find an answer they continuously go back to the passage and check if this answer is correct and the thing is with VR you're never going to be completely correct because we've talked about in the other video how Oftentimes, when you're looking for a keyword, there might be contradictory text later on in that passage or synonyms which contradict what you saw before. And you know, it's important to check for these things, but you could spend like all of your time checking for these things. And without reading the whole passage, you will never know fully. And the thing is, like, once you've done your few glances through, you need to be sure that it's the answer kind of thing and move on because the longer you spend on this question, the less time you're giving for the other questions. So, these questions I sourced from Medify and Medic Mind. And you know, I have this video up here that you can also check out, which goes to like a complete guide of all of the resources in the UK. I compare the price compared to the number of questions that they give and you know is it representative of the actual UK cap bank and stuff like that so you can check that out if you're interested but it's not where I got the questions in this video that's important it's how I walk you through these questions and how I answer them myself and in this video we'll go through a mixture of truth false can't tell questions all the questions and inference questions so let's get into it okay so with this question I would always go and start looking at the question first so it says most people in Hungary believe in the law to be beneficial for the country so so I look at the words quickly Hungary law beneficial country so the keyword I might look here for is beneficial. We don't really know what Laura is talking about at the moment, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly cast over the startings and endings of these paragraphs, or maybe just the start and the last, and see if I can get. Oh, and it says right here illegal to homeless, da da da, prohibiting it coming into effect. So I'm assuming it's something about illegal people, homeless, those are like, so basically when you're skim reading, you're, you don't really get a full concept of what's going on, you're just picking up words and like figuring it out as you go along because that's like the quickest way to go about it. So obviously this would be happening so much faster if I'm not explaining this, but what I do is I look at the question, pick up the important words, and then quickly go into the passage, figure out what I'm looking for. Okay, so it's a lore that's talking about homeless people and how it's illegal to be homeless. So looking back at the question, the word that this whole question revolves around is beneficial. So we're going to go back to the passage and we're going to look like the, the word beneficial is quite obscure. You, what you need to be looking for is any synonyms for like in favour of. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the passage but I'm only going to go like in a zigzag and I'm going to see if I can see anything being taken into that direction. Okay. So definitely, I already looked that at the end of this sentence here, it says that those who do not approve of the law are preparing to demonstrate it in opposition to it. So there are definitely people that do not, so it's not most people, as far as I know. From my quick cast of views, I don't see anything that says that most people are for it or most people aren't for it, but I do see that there are people who do not approve for it. So it's not all people, most people, we don't really have any figures, and I also like was looking at the figures, all of the percent and stuff, because there are some percent but it's talking about unemployment rate and yeah that's pretty much it so I'm just going to put can't tell and move on you don't want to be spending too long on these questions they shouldn't be that hard so you just kind of got to go with your gut and you can't keep looking over your text trying to confirm your answer so let's move on so the second question already I can see a percentage um, where many people make up 60 to 90 percent of the unemployed in Hungary so when I was going through my previous question I was also looking at the percentages because most of people in Hungary that's what I was talking about so I was also making sure that the percentages wasn't talking about the um, people who are opposed to the law because that would be a very easy quick way to rule out this question so this one says so 60 to 90 percent of unemployed people when I was looking at the figures in the last question I did notice that there was some figures relating to unemployment so I'm just gonna go check them out I already know that they're in the second paragraph so it says unemployment rate for Hungary is 10.7% and 
the Romani people, this figure may rise to somewhere in between 60 to 90 percent. Okay, so just looking at those two sentences, remember how when you look for a keyword you always look at the sentence before and the sentence afterwards so what i started off with with the 60 and 90 percent because that's exactly the same figures that was in the um question so it says for the romanian people the figure may rise to somewhere in between 60 and 90 percent so the great thing about this is we found our text immediately but the tricky thing about this is that they're trying to trip us up because they have two different facts and those facts aren't the facts that is being asked for in the question. So in question, it's saying Romani people make up 60 to 90% of unemployment in Hungary, but it doesn't say anything about that. It just says unemployment rate is 10.7 in total. For the Romani people, this figure rises to somewhere between 60 to 90%. So it's saying that these two are different entities. So I'm just gonna put it as can't tell because there is not enough information here and that's where they're trying to trip you up because it literally says Romani people 60 to 90 percent most people would have just been like yes but that's why you read the sentence before and the sentence afterwards so let's move on to the next question so here it says there are currently enough hostels to provide shelter to homeless people so what we're going to be looking at is hostels shelter homeless people now in my scanning through my first and second question I haven't seen anything about enough shelters for homeless people so I'm going to do another quick scan another zigzag and I will see you in a sec okay so already I found that um, in the third paragraph it says while there are too few positions available in hostels but reading the sentence before it says that charities are saying or claiming that there are few positions available in hostels so either it's a fault or a can't tell because it is basically state it's not a fact it's like opinions and in the last paragraph it says that the local councils of hungary should indicate the positions of hostels existing so that's a key point the next sentence says charities of those affected believe that there are one to three thousand individuals with no shelter in it so essentially there's no figures there's no stats it's just a lot of people saying that there aren't enough hostels and although we looked through it we scanned it we did this really quickly because what you're doing is you're going in a zigzag the moment I saw hostels I was like on it and yeah I've read all of the passages like obviously in this in the actual setting you'd be skimming it a lot more so you'd only be reading like every other word and trying to like put it all together in your head um, and then you'd come to the conclusion that it's can't tell because it's just a lot of charities saying that there aren't enough hostels there is no facts not by the council not by anyone so it's just a can't tell so the next question is this guy's name i'm not going to butcher it is a member of the governing political party of hungary so this one's easy you can just literally find the name it's capitalized and it's kind of weird so i'm just going to look for that one so basically i found it in the last paragraph the first sentence i'm telling you the first and last sentences are key but um yeah it says it in the last paragraph i've also found this other person's name which you know kind of through me for a second because they both had k's in it as well as the first sentence of the whole passage it says that the government political party of hungary is the one that's creating the law and in the last paragraph it's saying that he is a member of that political party that is creating the law so hence they are a part of hungary political party so yeah i'm just gonna put that as true and go on to the next one all right let's go on to medic mind questions i don't know why medify only have like four questions but it's really frustrating but i guess you know the price is actually like one of the best i've seen online they are so cheap so already i'm seeing that it's a long paragraph also i'm seeing that there are numbers in the question which might actually make it easier if it's not then i would probably flag and move on but let's go for it a man in one of the s21 portraits had a five digit number tag attached to his chest okay so already i know i have to look out for five digit number chest and s21 portrait so i'm just going to start with s21 because i can already see it so many times so i'm going to first of all have like a quick cursory view um of the introductions and conclusions they all have all of these words that i can't pronounce but i understand what s21 is and then i'm also noticing that it says so every time i see s21 i'm just quickly glancing at the sentence before and sentence afterwards and i see in the fourth paragraph there is something saying thousands of s21 portraits and then you see that there is a young man um in the prison photos he has a number tag on his chest and it's pinned onto him but nothing about five digit i've looked all over as well and there's nothing about a five digit number tag so it's can't tell because there's not enough information so the first time i was looking at s21 i saw that it was about a high school and that they turned it into a torture interrogation and execution center so they 
it's no longer a high school so I'm going to put that as false and move on I know that I could probably and it would be quite easy to look and scan for any contradicting information but I'm not going to because that's a waste of time and I kind of already know um, that that's probably not gonna happen unless I quickly want to scan down the last two paragraphs but I don't think so because I already have gone through like roughly the first and second and third for the first question <laughs> okay the third question is the Khmer Rouge contains mass graves okay so mass graves is the one that we're going to be looking for because the Khmer Rouge comes up so many times seems like they are a Cambodian political party as in the first sentence of the first paragraph so let's look for mass graves I'm already seeing already that the 14,000 people entered and only seven survived so I already know that loads of people died here but you want to see about graves that's the real question and there we go on the third paragraph first sentence it says on-site mass graves but it also says like I said context before and after the most haunting were the portraits taken by the Khmer Rouge at S21 and the Khmer Rouge contains mass graves that doesn't make sense so it is false because they are a group they didn't like does that make sense um okay so the next question is which of the following statements can be inferred from the passage there were hundreds of survivors no obviously that is not true because i think only seven survived which is what we read earlier in the first paragraph s21 was discovered in the last month of 1979 i don't know karma rouge occupied s21 yes uh, i think so because when we just read that mass graves sentence it said there were portraits taken by the karma rouge at s21 so i'm assuming that they had taken over this um high school former high school um and the interrogation rooms have no furniture all. I have no idea so I can't lie I would probably with these questions they're quite longer so I would probably just go with the Khmer Rouge occupied S21 to be honest with this question it would also be really quick to just look for 1979 and I can see on the fourth paragraph it says it was just first discovered S21 in January 1979 so 1979 is true but it was the first month not the last month so we're just gonna go with that Khmer Rouge occupied S21. I felt like Dora the Explorer taking you along with me doing the questions, but I hope that was really helpful and I hope you have a gist of what kind of pacing you have to do as well as what should be going through your head when you're doing these questions. If you need any more help, I have loads of other UCAT videos, including one on verbal reasoning, which goes through the best tactics to improve your speed reading, including a speed reading app and tests and all sorts of things, as well as UCAT videos on every other subtests and free cheat sheets, like one for QR with like the form we need and all of that stuff. So if you find that really helpful, make sure you subscribe as well as on this channel I have loads of other content on getting into dental school as well as life as a dental student because I'm now a fourth year and productivity tips so yeah I will see you soon subscribe if you haven't comment if you'd like to see anything more and I will see you later bye